Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be going through two methods of game theory analysis, uh, one being best response analysis and the second being iterated dominance analysis. So essentially there are three different ways of finding something called a Nash equilibrium, which is where both players of a game, either it being a sequ sequential or a simultaneous game, um, find a position which is stable that both are satisfied in, right? Which is why it's called Nash Equilibrium because it was someone, I think it was like John Nash who found Nash Equilibrium, which is why it's called that. So it's basically where two players are satisfied with their payoffs because that's where they can both maximize their utility because no other strategy or option will give them a higher utility, right? So we have a three by three matrix game table here where A, B, and C are the options or choices that player one can choose, and X, Y, and Z are the choices that player two can choose from. And as you can see here, there are two values within each cell. So every first digit, of every single row and column, these are all the payoffs of player one. So the utility that player one will get. And then obviously the second value will be the utility that player two gets. Um, so there are two different ways um, with, you know, uh, X by X or N by N game table to solving Nash equilibrium. Either way, it doesn't matter which method you use to find it. However, best response analysis is typically used in two by two table matrices or three by three. And then anything more than three iterated dominance is typically used, but you don't really commonly see four by four, five by five. Three by three is probably the most common one. Um, and we're gonna use, or we usually use iterated dominance when solving that, but you can use best response analysis. It'll still give you the same answer. So I'm gonna use the exact same example just to show you guys that that's true. So we'll start off with best response analysis. So um, first of all, what we're gonna to wanna to do is I'm gonna just put, that's a bad color. I'll do orange and I'll do green for iterated dominance. So for the first one, the best response analysis, what we're gonna to wanna to do is compare basically between if, what, if player one chooses one of their choices, what would player two choose and which of the choices does player two choose give them the highest payoff for themselves? So for player two, right? So I'll show you what I mean. So if we look at A here, if we just ignore these two for the time being, and we just look at A, if player one chose A, right? So it doesn't matter which one they choose because they've, they've chosen that one. Player two must choose between X, Y, and Z. So we're gonna ignore basically this, number these numbers sorry the first values because they represent what player one would choose but we're not considering that right now we're considering what player two wants so if we just look at the three values of x y and z when player one chooses a we can see that z gives us the highest payoff for player two so they would maximize their utility choosing this option so what we would do is you know show an indication that they would choose that Obviously, you wouldn't be scribbling out these numbers. You'd just be comparing them, right? So we have our first optimum point, if you must, right? For player two. You've got to be careful. So we keep doing that for options B and C as well. Remembering that we ignore the payoffs of player one and we only look at or compare the payoffs of what player two gets, right? So we'll do the same for B. You ignore the first number in every single cell and just compare the second value. And we see that five is the highest because five is more than two and five is more than three. We can do the same for C. So ignoring the first digits again of each cell and comparing all of the values of the second digit of each cell, we see that, you know, 12 is the highest because 12 is more than six and 12 is more than seven. So we'll just put a little indicator by it that, to show, you know, this is what player two would choose if player one chose this option, okay? Now, you should do the same, so the other way, 
So if player two chooses, you know, let's say option X, what would player one play? What, what would they play between these values? Because now instead of looking horizontally for your values, you're going to look vertically because, you know, player two chose X. So player one has the choice of A, B and C. They don't have the other choices of X, Y and Z, right? Hopefully that makes sense. So I just get rid of these. Okay, so let's see. If player two, I'll cross these out, chooses option X, what will player one do? So obviously we're going to ignore what player two payoffs are because we're not looking for them. We're looking for the payoffs of player one. So we have four, nine and three. What's the highest value out of these three digits? Well, it's clearly nine. 9 is more than 3, 9 is more than 4. So we have another indicating point here, right? Let me just write that back in. Rob Lee's out. There we go. So we're going to do the same for um, option Y and option Z. So player 2 chooses Y and player 1 has the options of A, B and C. But which out of those three strategies gives them the highest payoff? Well... It would be 8 because 8 is more than 5 and 8 is more than 7. And I think you're kind of getting the process now. If you don't rewind back, it will make sense. The more you do it, the more practice you get, the more you're under the, the matrix, you, you'll understand it, right? So we can do the same thing here for option Z. What will player 1 choose? Well, they're going to obviously choose option B because 11 is the highest payoff for them. Right. So you're probably wondering, why did we put those indicators? What are the indicators for well what it's supposed to show is if both players have chosen or selected that cell because it's given them the highest payoff then we've got Nash equi equilibrium and we can see that here with BY this is our Nash equilibrium because both players chose this cell when the other player chose their certain their certain choice so when player one chose B, player two chose Y. And when player two chose Y, player one chose B, which is why Nash equilibrium is at eight, five. And the other ones don't matter. You wouldn't consider them if it was like, who gets the highest payoff? You don't add them unless it's like in separate games and repeated games. But if it was just here asking who gets the max utility in Nash equilibrium, then you would only look at these two values and we can see obviously player one gets more at more utility or higher payoff than player two because eight is more than five, right? So the other numbers are basically useless unless let's say, you know, Nash Equilibrium was also here, then there'll be two Nash Equilibria, but I'll explain that type of game in another video, right? So we have our Nash, Nash Equilibrium here using best response analysis. So, um, we can now do iterated dominance. So hopefully that quick run through of best response analysis made sense because iterated dominance is basically based off of what best response analysis is. It's just a little bit more confusing. So you need to do it a few more times just to get your head around it. But we'll I'll write the working out as we go because it will just make sense too with this. So let's just get started straight away. So what we're going to want to do with iterated dominance is eliminate a row or a column first and then eliminate the opposite. So if we eliminated a row in our first move, we'll eliminate a column in the second move and then we'll eliminate a row and we'll eliminate a column until we basically get to Nash equilibrium, right? So what I mean is let's say I want to get rid of rows first. Let's compare a and B. So you compare only two rows and two columns at a time with each other and the payoffs that they give, right? So I'll kind of split off what iterated dominance is first before I actually start. So iterated is, you know, entire thing and dominance is the entire thing. This entire thing dominates the other comparing, the other compare, the, <laughs> the other comparing column or row. Sorry, that took a while to come out. But anyways, so if we're comparing rows A and B and their payoffs, we're going to be looking at the payoffs that they give if player two chose X, Y, and Z. So we can just ignore C right now. Okay, 
Um, I'm actually just gonna, gonna move this to one side. We're just gonna ignore this right now, right? We're just gonna literally compare A and B with when player two chooses X, Y, and Z. So, if player two chooses X, so ignoring all of player two's values, like I said earlier, once if you're looking at what the player selected, then you ignore their payoffs because you're trying to look at what the other player gets because they'll be choosing their option based on what the other player chose, right? So let's say player two chose X, what player one choose? They'll clearly choose B because nine is more than four. And then player two selects Y, player one will clearly choose B again. So that's that. And then if player two chooses Z, then player one will again choose B. So as you can see, we've seen a dominating row. So what we can do is just cross out the entire of A. Okay, this might sound ridiculous, yes. We ignore the payoffs of player two because it doesn't matter in our case. And we just basically eliminate the entire row because either way, the those values will be eliminated because player one wouldn't choose that row no matter what is why it cancels out okay so you literally just cross out you just flat out ignore it totally and then now what i like to do is compare between two columns so what you want to do is select two columns it doesn't have to be next to each other so you know let's select x and z and see what happens ignore y for now like i've said before just look at x and look at z for player two, right? We're, we're comparing columns. So what we're gonna wanna do is just ignore all of the first value payoffs, right? Like that. I'm not gonna cross it out because it'll be a bit too confusing, but just mentally, you know, make a note down, ignore the first values. So let's say player one chooses option B. Between X and Z, which one would player two choose? Well, they'd clearly choose three, right? Because, you know, the, the payoff is higher here, ignoring Y, by the way. And then let's look at option C, because option A is being crossed out. We don't need to consider it anymore. So option C, again, which one would player choose player two choose to pick? Well, it would be again Z, because 12 is a higher payoff than 7. So again, we found another dominating column. Okay, so... Because Z is dominating X, we just eliminate the entire column X. Sorry, I haven't been writing this down. So we found that initially B is more than A. And then we've just found that Z is more than X, right? So we now have a 2 by 2 matrix, pretty much, because we've eliminated all of the outskirts, right? This won't happen every time, it's just coincidentally this happened for us. So we've just figured out a column. So we should now, you know, move on to finding um, or comparing between the rows. So I'll do that really quickly. So comparing between B and C, because we have no other choice here. If player two chooses Y, then player one would choose B. If player two chooses Z, player one would play... B again, perfect. This is this is going amazingly. So we can see that B is dominating C. So we can again eliminate the entire row of C. So now we're left with you know only row B. So we're gonna only have to, or we don't have a choice. We have to compare between the columns. So between Y and Z, if player two chose Y, or sorry, if player one chose B. Then what would player 2 choose? Well, they would clearly choose Y because 5 is more than 3. So what you can say is Y dominates Z or more than Z. And then you eliminate the entire Z row. But because these ones have already been eliminated, you only eliminate one cell. And there you go. Nash equilibrium is at 8, 5, which is what we discovered before. So both ways give you Nash equilibrium. However... 
One's a little bit more complicated, but is much more practical in a larger matrix compared to best response analysis, where you go through literally one by one and see which one is gives you the highest payoff, which is why both analyses are used. But I personally prefer best response just because it's a little bit easier, um, especially with smaller matrix tables. But you know, if you may, you might someone might might find iterated dominance to be more, you know formulaic or sophisticated so you can go with that but either way you should get the same Nash equilibrium in the next video I'll be discussing backwards induction and the types of games that are involved in game theory so yeah hopefully this helped and my explanations weren't too rusty but yeah see you guys later